Well, hello and a very warm welcome to our presentation on the Rhine Initiative and about how to facilitate the upscaling of hydrogen and inland waterway shipping. So my name is Inga Sörner. I work at NRW Energy for Climate. That's a state agency for energy and climate protection in Northern Westphalia. And together with the province of South Holland, I'm coordinating the Rhine Initiative that I'd like to introduce to you in the following. And I'm really happy being here today together with Marion Castellanes or we'll be giving you some insights into the Condor project that was launched only today. So, um, when we're looking at the greenhouse gas emissions within the European Union, we already know that the transport sector is one of the biggest polluters, having a, a share of nearly one third of EU's total emissions. And inland waterway transport with vessels traditionally run by diesel are one of the most significant contributors because having a share of nearly 5% within the sector. So in order to achieve the targets that we have set in the Paris Agreement, inland waterway transport can really play a key role because inland waterway transport it will be really even more important in the future and due to the high emissions, it's really important to focus on inland waterway transport in the future. So in order to establish a zero emission transport corridor, the use of hydrogen as an alternative and sustainable fuel is really promising. So until now, we only have a few hydrogen powered inland waterway vessels. So there will be two um, being into operation still this year. So the FPS Mars, for instance, will be start sailing this year in May and also the MS Anthony will start operating this year. But in order to, well, establish a zero emission uh, transport corridor, we really need a system change. But there are certainly, there are a lot of challenges. So first of all, the infrastructure is still limited. So we really need huge of investments to set up the right ecosystem. Also the costs of hydrogen compared to, uh, well, fossil fuels are still high and also the availability is still limited. And also when it comes to safety, there are quite a lot of safety concerns when it comes to the application of hydrogen. And also there is no regulation at first, so we really have to work on new regulations to really incentivize and enable the use of hydrogen in inland waterway transport. And also as a last aspect, awareness and education. So we really have to work on an increased awareness and education in this area. So what is Rhine? What is the Rhine Initiative? Well, summarizing it in one sentence, we can say that the Rhine Initiative is a network of excellence. We are a front runners network and we do have the aim of collaborating towards eliminating emission through a system that is a purpose driven system one. And we are basing our system or our work on hydrogen applications in Europe along inland waterway corridors. So the Rhine Initiative was initiated by the province of South Holland and Northern Westphalia in 2019. And we do have this overall objective of establishing a transport corridor that is a zero emission transport corridor. And this along the entire Rhine Alpine corridor. And we will be doing this by accelerating the use of hydrogen in the entire freight transport sector. And in order to achieve this goal, we have set up different um, steps that we'll be working on in the future. And the first step is that we'll be focusing on is to really well develop the right conditions for upscaling demand and supply and also to establish the right infrastructure. First, focusing on the use of hydrogen in inland waterway transport. And of course, a focus is to really look for cost efficient solutions for achieving this goal. Um, well, um, we have worked out or established a kickoff study during the last years in which we will have based or elaborate a blueprint, which we will work in our, our work for the coming years. So when we're looking at a geographical scope, as I already have mentioned before, we will be looking at the entire Rhine Alpine corridor. But first of all, we're having a smaller scope between Rotterdam, Duisburg and Cologne. So our aim is of realizing of up to 12 vessels in the Netherlands, but also in Northern Westphalia within the coming four years. Looking at the technical requirements, um, we have identified that the best cost efficient and almost best technical solution will be to work on compressed gaseous hydrogen that will be filled on site and then hopefully soon existing production locations. And regarding the bunkering concept, we will be working with swappable containers. 
So um, fuel cell legislation or the legislation for applying hydrogen and inland waterway transport is still a huge challenge because there are no regulations in place. The inland ships that uh, are working or in which uh, hydrogen will be applied still need exemptions. So we really have to see how to establish, how to work out the appropriate or the right legislation. Um, the advantage of this approach, of this blueprint, is um, that there's already a technological maturity we can base our work on, and there also will be in the future the availability of hydrogen. And also this approach allows certain flexibility when it comes to future developments. But of course, also here we do have certain challenges. So first of all, one aspect is how to fund the vessels. So we really need funding for, uh, for the vessels, so this is one of the biggest challenges we are facing today, but also the logistical processes, we have to um, invest in business models. So this is a further challenge. Regular grips I already have mentioned, and we have to think of how to standardize <laughs> containers within the Rhine Alpine corridor. So um, as I said in the beginning, two regions have started working together, South Holland and Northern Westphalia, and also some ports like the port of Rotterdam, Duisburg, Rhine Cargo. But now this network has already been increased, so now we have nearly 10 regions that are working together. So in the Netherlands, Germany, Austria, but also in Belgium, so we really have a strengthened network within the European Union. And um, yeah, but besides having this political so support that is quite important for working on this topic, we also have a huge network of private partners, of harbors working within this network. So today we are already having around 36 partners within this network. And now I would like to hand over to Marion, who will be telling you something about the Kanda project. Oh. <laughs> For the last two weeks, I was camping in this location on the shore of the River Maas with my daughter. We were enjoying nature at the outside, the ships passing by, and my daughter was playing in the waves of those ships. However, at the quiet moments, and especially during the night, these ships were also disturbing me. Because when it was quiet and when I was just not enjoying anything else, I was hearing those ships passing by and also smelling the fumes. Over the last four years, I've been working on zero emission shipping, mainly with the target of CO2 reductions to tackle the climate challenge that we have. But during these weeks, I realized that this is not only about climate, this is also about other things, because these ships pass by cities, villages, animals, nature, and there's also people sailing on these vessels and working on these vessels. And they are also disturbed by the noise and the fumes, possibly. I'm here to tell you about Condor, and this is a project which started more or less one year ago. The key uh, sponsors and the steering committee members are the Port of Rotterdam, Province of South Holland, Waterstofnet, and the Rabobank. I don't need to show this slide anymore because Inga already did, but I do want to stress that this project originates from the Rhine Initiative. We started about one year ago following another project which aimed at getting 12 inland ships in the water by 2024. But by now, we have already uh, some delays, and this is why it's even more important to accelerate the change and the transition. And we believe that Condor is the right solution for that. So how do I explain Condor? That's easiest to explain the real goal of the project. The goal is to speed up emission-free shipping by at least five to 10 years. And we do this by five sub-targets. First of all, we aim for operational, technical, and economical feasibility within 10 years. Secondly, we go for modular, standardized, and scalable solutions. And we have electrification as a no-regret option. Third, what we want to achieve is to reduce the necessary investment for the ship owners. We do this by moving towards pay-per-use solutions and finally towards energy as a service. 
Fourth, we want to implement 50 ships, 45 inland and five short sea ships. And uh, we want to facilitate an open and flexible hydrogen supply market for this industry because we believe that is necessary to enable the, the, the acceleration. <coughs> This animation will uh, show briefly how this will work in practice. So a ship will arrive at a container terminal. There are empty containers or tank containers with hydrogen will be removed from the ship. Full ones can be put on the vessel and then the hydrogen will flow to a fuel cell and the fuel cell will of course then change it into uh, electricity which will fuel or go, uh, go to the electromotor. Next, the tank container can be moved on a truck to an electrolyzer with a filling point nearby. That's where the tank container can then be filled again with the green hydrogen. And afterwards, it can be moved back to the terminal. And that's why we, where the next vessel can be, uh, can be fueled. This way, we avoid the lock-in effect of expensive infrastructure. We have been building a large consortium along the full value chain over the last year. And as you can see on this slide, we have found many partners that are enthusiastic in supporting this uh, project. There are ports, there's uh, shipping uh, companies, hydrogen suppliers all along the value chain. So how are we actually going to do this? In this project, we will tackle all the different elements that need to be uh, prepared to get the ships going and to achieve uh, feasibility. On the top, we see three work packages that will be supporting the project, supporting the technical piece. And in the bottom, we have the three key technical elements. Work package four in the bottom has the hydrogen supply and logistics, where we will not only work on the, the tank containers, as I mentioned, but also setting up the logistics and all the regulation around it. In work package five, we will work on onboard technology, creating modular solutions and uh, scalable solutions for fuel cell and battery technology, and also move them then in a pay to you, for use uh, model. And in the last work package uh, six, we will work on preparing the ships and having the ship design in such a way that those modular solutions fit on the ships. So if you translate into this into how we're going to implement it, uh, we see again four blocks. On the, bot and the top, we see the three supporting work packages from the previous uh, page. But then we are moving into a more practical way. So we want to establish two companies. Company one will be creating a tank container pool, so the pool of hydrogen storage, which can be used by several ship owners uh, to increase the utilization of the tanks. And they will also support the whole logistics piece of it. Secondly, there's a company two, which will uh, be established for the supply of the onboard technology, the fuel cells and the battery uh, solutions and some technology around it. And lastly, when we go for funding and also for CapEx, we also need a, a big chunk for ship owners to prepare their ships to be able to sail with the technology that we are developing. We are still looking for other partners, so if you would like to have more information or if you want to join us in accelerating towards the zero emission shipping, feel free to contact me. Thank you.